I'm here. Hey, what do you think of my new mask? It may not protect me from you, but it might protect you from me. The mask. Hey, it's based on Van Gogh's Starry Night, in case you didn't know. Now you do. Well, obviously, I don't need this mask in here. So let's just take that off. But I wanted you to see that. It's such a fun mask. I love fun masks. Anyway. So today, here we are. Welcome to my studio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I just want to start off with letting you know that there is one quote, my favorite quote, that pretty much describes me and why, why I paint. Oh, hi, Gary. And Henrik, I don't know you, Henrik, but welcome. Anyway, Jason, hi, buddy. Glad you can make it today. Hope you can stay all the time, the whole, the whole session. But anyway, as I was saying, there's a, a quote that definitely describes me and why I paint. And that quote is, creativity is a drug that I cannot live without. It's by Cecil B. DeMille. And it kind of, like I say, it, it says, tells, tells about why I paint. And my why is because I have to. It's a deep-seated emotion that is not satisfied unless I'm doing it. If you know, if I don't paint regularly, on a regular basis, consistently, then uh, I get depressed. And I think that's a lot a way, the way with a lot of, of artists. Anyway, I also wanted to share with you my mission. And my mission is, first and foremost, I want each and every viewer to have their own experience with my artwork. And uh, obviously, I'm looking over here at my notes. But I encourage you, as I paint, to, to think about what you, what you see, what you're, what you're feeling, the emotions that you're feeling. Don't look in abstract painting, which is what I do, obviously, but don't look for an image because there are no images in the painting itself unless they're unintentional. So I ask you not to look for those. But I'm going to work on a, a canvas, a 40 by 30 canvas. And as you can see, I've already laid down an underpainting. Yesterday, I interviewed an artist from Prague, the Czech Republic. And of course, I always talk about process when, when I interview an, uh, an artist. I'm always interested in their process. And one of the things that she says she does when she first starts a painting is she uses gesso and mixes in or paints on top of the gesso with ink. So I thought, well, you know, I'll give that a, I'll give that a try. So last night when I was preparing the canvas with the underpainting, I prepared some gesso and I mixed in a kind of a magenta colored ink as well as some blue. And I'm, I'm not sure what, I think that it may have been a phthalo blue ink. Anyway, I kind of got overzealous and just poured, a, almost poured the whole bottle of the magenta into into the gesso and so I used it and created this this underpainting you can see some of it the, the the some of the lines perhaps you can't see it it's difficult to see at a distance but you can see some of uh, some of the underpainting and then I took I still had some left with the blue the blue gesso so I added that to to the top to create some kind of a, a composition from from which to, to start so, oh, by the way, if you want to take a screenshot, please take a screenshot and send it to me. Send it to my email, which is jerryhardestystudio at gmail.com. I would love to see these. Julie, I don't know you either. Julie Maser, welcome. Glad to have you. I'm Bello. Bello. Thank, she says, thanks for this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Well, thank you, Bella, for uh, watching me. Anyway, so moving on, let's get started with the painting. Now, I want to say again, you've seen, for those of you who have already seen me, I am using several tools that I've used before. I like paint knives, this wide, this wide one. Uh, you can really slap on a lot of paint. I have a couple of smaller ones and then the pointed one out. So I'm going to be using those today. 
I also have uh, the same brushes that I've used before. Some of these cheap brushes that I don't like to wash. Rodolfo, welcome. And so I, I you know, I use them till they, they're falling apart or they dry out or whatever, and then I just throw them away. I also have a, a three-inch one. Same, same way. But I added this one. This is one of my favorites, and it's kind of, it's kind of a deformed brush. It's, it's not normal. It's kind of like, kind of like me. But probably, that's probably why I like to use it so much. So I do use this. I especially use this one to paint the sides. They're, they're one and a half inch sides, and so I always paint them in black. And this, this brush works well for that particular, that particular job, which I, I don't really like to do, but I have to do it anyway. And I have a number of paints on my palette today. I have a number of quinacridones, a quinacridone magenta, quinacridone red, quinacridone orange, uh, crimson. Then, hi, David. David John Casson. Well, thank you for watching, David. And then I have a naphtal red. I have a Hansi yellow, um, phthalo blue, French um, ultramarine blue, a turquoise and a pink and white and then I have some dry pigment as well so I'll be using a lot of those maybe not all of them but certainly a lot of them so let's get started I just realized I don't have an orange on here, and I really do like uh, orange, uh, orange against pink. So I'm gonna really mix up a little, just a little bit of, of orange to use on here, and it won't take me long here. Uh, that's kind of a putrid orange. Um, I like more of a, a red orange, but I like that the the the. <laughs> Ooh, that's too much yellow. That's more yellow than orange. But if I work it in like so, then you get it, then it becomes a little bit of a green there. So let me let me back up because there's one thing there's one thing that I want to do that I forgot. Hi Neil. And that is, no, I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. Here it is. I want to uh, draw some, a little bit on, on the canvas itself. Draw some shapes. For instance, let's outline some shapes here. As such. And it just highlights those shapes a little bit. Oh, I kind of like that. And let's, let's, uh, ah, you know, where else would I like to have some shapes? It seems to me that would be good. That would be good. So we have some kind of repetition in here with some of these shapes. There we go. I kind of like that. So, moving right along. Whoops. I just knocked off a couple of tools, or one tool at least. And I would like to go back to this orange because I'm still not happy with it. Maybe it's the red I'm using. Let's try this red over here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Baby. Oh, much better. I 
just don't have enough room here. Now some of these are somewhat... Oh, look at that. I love that. See, this is, this is um, a transparent. And I love the way the paint beneath is, is shining through, coming through. See, doesn't that create, that creates a beautiful texture in there. See the, the lines coming through? I love that very, very much. And you can see those black lines as well that I just drew on there. Nice, 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 nice. So let's get a little, just a little bit darker over here. And this too is transparent. So. I don't know if this is transparent or not, but we'll find out. Yes, it is. I love these transparent colors. Eric Nyberg, welcome. Kimberly Ruth Christie, hey, I know you. Oh, these are all oh, very, 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 Now for a minute I think I'm going to switch to this wonderful brush that I bragged about that I like. I'm going to dip that in some sodium silicate and hope that it will help the paint the surface to, which is okay, but I'm getting some nice texture in the painting as well. Well, thank you, Kimberly. She says, she says, beautiful color palette. Well, you know, I think so, but I'm going to try this a little bit further. And I can't paint without painting with um, phthalo blue. Now, if you can spell phthalo blue, blue, phthalo, artists, you can't do it. But anybody else, if you think you can, can spell phthalo blue, get on there and spell phthalo. It's a hard word. No fair, no fair looking it up either. But I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Let's see if this will, what this will do for us. Again, I'm still using that sodium silicate. Isn't that nice? I also like the way it's beating up there. See, can you see that?
left in the center. Right now he's left in the center, so let's see what we can do with that. Oops. Hi, Aaron. Welcome. You know, the downside of adding yellow on top of blue is it turns green, or at least part of it turns green. But over here it's turning black to yellow. Nice. Nice, nice. Now this yellow that I'm using is Hansa Yellow Light. Too much white, too much white, too much white. Okay, gotta get rid of some of that. Okay. Let's spray some water on there. And then let's go up here. Just kind of rub that out. Oh, much better. Much better. Now, if it dries, Runs on down and drips. I don't care about that, but I just don't want it an impostal effect right there on top of everything else. And up here, look, that's already dry, but if I scrape across it, I'm going to get some of those, some of that scumbling effect. Scumbling is just going across the top of it, but usually with another paint. But you get, you see the texture I'm creating by going across the top of that? Perhaps you don't. Nadia! Welcome, Nadia. Now that's the very same color here that I used over here, but this was a lot thinner. in there. I have to work those out. Ooh, 
Okay, gotta stop a minute to get some of those bristles out. They bug me. Although I had a mentor once who told me that in viewing some of the paintings at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, many of the famous artists just left the bristles in the painting. Jerome Green, welcome! And sometimes I will do that. I think I said on another earlier live painting, and you may have heard me, that one time I had so many bristles in a painting, I just got, I, I just got so, so uh, overwhelmed that I started cutting the bristles off of, of painting, or off of brushes, and just adding them to the painting, all over the whole painting. So it was kind of fun. Uh, see, these are already dry. And when they dry, they're much harder to get out of the painting. There, I got that one out. But I can do the same thing here. No, nope, those aren't coming out. Look how that black is coming through. Love it. Coming through there, there, all the way down. Some of the same, same shapes that I put in earlier. All right, let's move on. Okay, let's just move on. By the way, if you have comments or questions, please add them. I would, I will welcome your comments and questions. I will address them after the, the whole thing is over, after the, the session is over, and try to address address them for everyone. Thanks, Ann Becker. Thank you. Hey, Julie Smith, you're here, here too. Glad to see you. And Becker, have you ever done this live? Try it. Hey, Kyle Nelson, my friend, my good friend. Kyle, are you driving that truck today? Paolo Jorge Fantilla. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but you're welcome. Glad you're here. You don't like that. You know, that's the beauty of... of Painting? You don't like something? Hey. Spray it. Remove it. Paint over it. Ooh, there's that blue coming through. I, gotta, I don't like the blue coming through right now. I don't want it coming through. Hey, what do you think of that? Now, let me see. I gotta get rid of some of that. This is one of my favorite things to do, is to get something wet and then go back into it with a paper towel to wipe some of it away and it creates 
get some interesting effects. Some interesting textures. See, I can get a little bit of white coming through. That's actually the white of the canvas. But it adds to the overall texture of the piece, which I like. I'm liking this more and more. Now, remember the underpainting is, is pretty much this color or this over here. So this is kind of a, a, a very light turquoise. So I'm not getting the underpainting totally. Some of it, but not totally. Now, what, what's fun here is I'm going to pull some of this down, especially if I wet it just a little bit. I'm going to pull it down into this area over here. Let's see if it will work. Yeah. A little bit. Get some of that orange up in there as well. Ah, oh, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, nice, nice. Now there's some of that blue from the underpainting, the original painting. So I, that's something I want to work on. Cover it up just a little bit. How about... Let's go back to my favorite colors over here. Okay, I'm going to use... Now, whoops, got a brush in the way. I am going to use a little bit of quinacridone burnt orange. Now the thing about these Quinn colors, Quinacron colors, is that they are transparent. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Okay, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Phenol? 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 Anyway, welcome. Appreciate you being here. something to it, doesn't it? I kind of like that. Ooh. Let's get a little bit more of this. Okay, I think I know what I want in the middle there. Let's see if this will work. If you ever watch painters paint life and their their palette or their the paint is on a table and it's like four or five steps away hey i want it right there so i can dip my brush in it and i don't have to move around well maria welcome
Terry, welcome, man. Or woman. No, man. I see your face now. Worth a drip or two. Thank you. Ah, nice, 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 nice. Love it. Okay, let's repeat that over there. this area down in here. How long, how long have we been on here? Anybody know? What's in the spray bottle? Water. However, I have used rubbing alcohol before. For instance, let me show you. If I spritz some rubbing alcohol in there, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it eats away at the paint, acrylic paint. It won't do that with with uh, oil, but it certainly will with acrylic. And it creates some, because of the spray, it creates some nice texture up in there that it, you otherwise wouldn't get.
Thanks, Terry. You might be able to see it better here if I spray some of that rubbing alcohol in this area since it's a little closer. So let me do that. It's not doing it like it did up here. And it may be because the paint down in here might not be as thick. But see if I put more on with that rubbing alcohol on there, that paint may just slide right off. And of course, we don't want that. Let's see if we can create some crosshatch here. Some of that green going. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Still don't like this area, so we gotta do something there. Well, the go to color seems to be this quinacridone magenta. So let's put some more of that on here, over here, and see what. really nice right in there. See that? Really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, let me take a, a little break here, and I'm going to come back to it in a minute. But what I want to say is that uh, mark your calendar for May 29th at 7 p.m. That's Mountain Time. And I will be doing a live studio visit on Facebook Live. So I'll be showing uh, five between five and seven paintings of my paintings, latest paintings, and talking about them. Also, I would encourage you to go to my website, which is jerryhardestystudio.com, and just look around, have a look around, see what you like. Maybe you don't like anything. But anyway, there is a 20% discount site-wide. So if you're interested, you get 20% off whatever you'd like. Now, I'm using a 3-inch blade. You can see, so you see what it looks like. 
and I'm scraping down into the upper layers, down into the underpainting so that it comes through a little bit more. You can see it's starting to come through up in here and now it's coming through down in here as well. So let's see, we might want to do a little bit more of that. Although, you know, I can overdo it, which I've been able to do, but I like the way that Another thing I like to do, but this is more when the paint is wet. This, this is not wet. I like to scratch into it with something, you know, for instance, the back end of a brush sometimes works. Here I'm using a skewer to do that. I also have a chopstick that I sometimes use. Okay. Just making marks. to paint over those marks they, they would absorb some of the some of that paint which is which is kind of a cool effect as well uh, just a little bit more Paint's drying out. Well, what do you think? Rusty Harden, welcome. 
Let's see. I can't pronounce the name. Matt. Last name is Madzar. Welcome. Appreciate you being here. I think I'm going to have to live with this for a while to determine whether I, I think it's finished or if I want to add some more paint on top of what I've already got. There's a lot of paint on there right now. And the unifying color seems to be the, the magenta, the, the uh, quinacrono magenta, which I'm, I'm really loving. Uh, I finally got, kind of got like some red in here that I like. So I'm liking it. I like the drips. Give some continuity to it. And it's got some nice texture as well. Please leave me a comment, question, whatever. Uh, I would appreciate it. I appreciate everybody for being here. Thank you so much. And my battery is dying. So I guess I better quit. Again, thank you. And I hope to see you the next time. I'll paint sometime probably next week. And again, be sure and put it on your calendar for the show on the 29th.